Jamie, welcome home to Easter Road. Yeah, thanks for having me. Your, uh, your schedule is, is pretty intense, to say the least, so we're, uh, it's a privilege to have you here today. I mean, when, when were you last at Easter Road? It's... Well, we were just talking about that. I think the last game I went to was, uh, was against Aberdeen, which was, I don't know if that was kind of beginning of last season or maybe season before that. Peter when Malonga scored that great goal, which it, which it was, yeah, they won, I think they won 2-0, yeah. But you're plugged in, I mean, you're always following the results, watching the games online when, you're, when your schedule allows, when you're not playing tennis. Yeah, I mean, it's easy, obviously, to, to follow the results on your, on your phone, and if I'm kind of somewhere where I can sit down and, you know, find a dodgy live stream on a Saturday afternoon, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to do that, yeah. Official streams are available for yeah. 5 minutes on Watterhouse <laughs> <Yeah>. TV. <laughs> Um, the club obviously means uh, a lot to you and, and your family going, th going through your, your grandpa so I suppose any chance to get to get back here must be must be snatched that yeah I mean like I said this is the first time this season I've been back in Scotland so first real opportunity to come and watch the watch the guys play so um, I'm looking forward to it hopefully uh, hopefully get three points on the board and kind of continue the the recent good form and your mum's got a valid excuse for having to drop out late today well, yeah, she's been she's in process of moving house. So I was there all morning, kind of packing boxes and unpacking stuff. So um, I was kind of glad to get away, to be honest. <laughs> Leave her to it. Who were you? We, we've all seen the picture of you as, as young Hibs kids and, and growing up. Who, who were the players you looked up to? Who were the favourites? Um, I mean, like when we were really young, I mean, guys like Keith Wright, Mickey Weir, Joe Tortolano. Always loved his name. Um, and then obviously got a bit older, like Frank Soze. I mean, he was probably the best player I've ever seen play for play for Hibs. I think Russell Latipe. Um Yeah, we've had a few. Michael O'Neill as well. Magic Michael O'Neill loved him, um, and he always played on the wing. So where we were sitting in like the family enclosure, we'd always he would always be the closest kind of Hibs player to us. But um, Hibs had a lot of good players in their time. I think. Did you have what? What was the kind of first strip you had, or what were your early memories of pulling on the pulling on the shirt? Um. I don't know. I mean, if the the first or pr first game I probably remember going to was probably like the Skull Cup, um, and I remember coming to Hibs a lot and watching them lose to Airdrie all the time. It used to be like the worst trip ever <laughs> going to watch Airdrie as like Can a punishment. <laughs> yeah, I remember like we'd get there and you know it'd be like two 0 down in fifteen minutes and like Andy's lying across like three seats like shouting to my dad, "Wake up, wake up, we go home." <laughs> But it's always it was always like that against the Airdrie. This is where we're supposed to say that perseverance and yeah. the building trades. <laughs> Stayed off, the yeah, thing. exactly, yeah. That's where we got our resilience from, I think, yeah. What do the next few weeks and months look like for you? What's your what's your schedule like? So bit of downtime now and then I'm going to Bogota with my wife on from seventh to eleventh, uh, see her family and then we go up to Florida on the twelfth and do a pre season training for a couple of weeks. Go to Phoenix. For four days over Christmas to see um, spend time with my wife's brother there, his family, and then we go from Phoenix through uh, round to Australia for uh, tournament in Sydney, and then pre preparation for the Australian Open. We, uh, you'll be keeping an eye on Ryan Porteous for for different reasons. Your brother obviously helps mentor him. You'd be pleased as recent Scotland call up. Yeah, it was cool. Um, I mean, he didn't he didn't get to play, but I think um, he's he's on the right track. Obviously, had a tough injury last season, but. Um, you know, he's back now, back in the team and you know, hopefully get a good season under his belt and keep uh, knocking on the door of the Scotland team. Is that something you can see yourself going down a, a similar route? To, what, playing the, for the Scotland? <laughs> well, there's probably still time, but the mentorship route? Or, uh... I, I don't know. I mean, it's not, to be honest, it's not something I really thought about. I mean, I like helping some of the younger Scottish kids in, in tennis. Um, I think... Um, you know, I guess like from our experiences of getting to the highest level in sport and obviously coming from Scotland where, you know, we don't have like any sort of history, certainly in, in tennis, of being, you know, top top class. And, you know, I think obviously the Scotland team has probably struggled over the year, well, recent years of having like really top class players in the team to kind of get them through to major major finals. And, you know, I think... You know, maybe it's interesting to someone to hear our experiences in terms of, you know, finding ways to get the best out of yourself and optimising your performance when, you know, you really need to, to do it. Maybe some parallels between that wait for the, the Scottish Cup ending and 
you and Andy's own, I suppose, sacrifice and, and struggle over the years to get the, the reward at the end? Yeah, I mean, I hope that was worth it for a lot of people. When, yeah, exactly. <laughs> about half that with, with Davis Cup, but... Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of happy people that day. <laughs> we, we put Elish McCoggan on the spot the other day. If you were to give out one bit of advice for any, any of our young players or any young hip supporter watching in terms of uh, maybe pursuing a, a career in, in sport or, or sticking in it at hips through the youth ranks, what, what would it be? Um, I, think, I think for me the most important thing is, one, is to enjoy what you're doing. Two, is just you know to work hard to get the maximum you can out of yourself. And always be willing to to learn new things learn new skills and you know sort of self-development because at the end of the day the more tools you have at your disposal the more easier it is to adapt to all the different situations that are happening um you know on, on the pitch in this case or you know new managers come in they want you to play different positions you've got that that ability to do that <laughs>